Hi, this is Caroline. I'm, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, what am I? I'm a person. I'm a person. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, this is Caroline from The Happy Sensitive. I am a coach for highly sensitive people and empaths. And today what we're gonna to talk about is that your feelings are not just annoying things getting in the way of your good ideas. And three, reason, three reasons why your feelings are really, really useful and important, especially if you're a sensitive person. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first reason is that your feelings, your emotions are actually part of your intuition. Now, not all feelings are like that, because if you have a lot of negative thoughts, then you're gonna have resulting negative feelings, that is true. But there are a lot of feelings that are coming from your body, from your intuition, trying to tell you about what's really going on in your life. Not what you wish were true, not what, what you would like to hear, but what is actually happening. So your emotions, your feelings, are a really strong connection between you knowing about your right reality. And you may not like your reality, but your reality is what you have to work with, right? If you think that you're dealing with clay and you start creating all these strategies for dealing with clay, but actually you're dealing with sand, you're gonna struggle a lot, right? It's better to know that you're dealing with sand. And so even when your emotions are trying to tell you something tough, it's better to know what they're trying to tell you so that you know what's really, really going on, what's really out there, so that you can devise a true solution and not just kind of <clears throat> spin your wheels, you know, and figure, not trying to figure something out that isn't really what you think it is. So emotions are really, really important, but they're not easy to decipher because it's something that most of us were not taught, right? So that's the hard part, but at, at core, at their root, they're there to inform you, they're there to help you, they're here, there to tell you, hey, you gotta know about this thing that's going on. Right? And they're telling you through your body. You know, some people are going to say, some people are going to quote the standard psychological trend du jour at me right now and say, no, 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 Caroline. Your thoughts create your emotions. And your emotions create your actions. And your actions create your life. And that is partially true, as in, yes, there is that direction. But there is also a different direction. There are also emotions that are truly coming from inside your body that are coming from your intuition trying to tell you something real, not just a thought in your head getting translated into a feeling. So, you know, when I'm talking about the power of emotions and the value of them, I'm really talking about these intuitive feelings that are just really trying to communicate with you about what is really truly going on. And it's often clashing with the mind because the mind has, you know, its own ideas about, you know, what the preferred, re preferred reality is, but your emotions are like, nope, nope, that's not, that's not what it is. This is what's really going on. Okay. So that's, that's one really big reason why, you know, why people don't often don't like their emotions, but emotions are important because it's a reality check. It's a reality check. Okay, second reason, let me just check my notes. Second reason your emotions are really important is that they give you the power and the fuel to create what you want to create. You can have a great idea, but if there's no energy behind it, nothing's gonna happen, right? You're like, that's a great idea, but I'm too tired and exhausted to make it happen. <sighs> You're not gonna make it happen. Your emotions are your fuel, but there's lots of different kinds of fuel, lots of different kinds of emotions, and they all have their own specific way of fueling you. And the problem is, if you've learned to fear, suppress, hide, judge that emotion, then you cannot use the fuel that it provides, right? Or if you've tried to learn to, some people harness their emotions as weapons, you know, they use every possible energy they have as a weapon to fight other people with, that is also not what they're really for. So we've all seen really bad examples of people dealing with their feelings, but the solution is not to then just suppress your feelings because your feelings are your energy. They are your drive. Without your feelings, nothing's gonna happen. Without your feelings, there's not gonna be any fuel. And that brings us to the third really big reason why your feelings and emotions are super important because they're part of your physical, emotional, spiritual health. You cannot be a healthy person without having a healthy relationship with your own feelings, with your own energy. You can't. I know there's a lot of people who try 
and who imagine they can and who judge their feelings, say these feelings are good, these feelings are bad, these feelings I like and I'll keep, these feelings I push away. But even though obviously, you know, like we have in our body, we have mechanisms for when we're overwhelmed, when we go through trauma, we have mechanisms to temporarily suppress our feelings to get through the day, you know, and that is totally fine. Everyone has this, everyone does this sometimes, and that's totally normal. But the goal is to get back in touch with feelings and start processing them and reconnect with them, not be disconnected from them forever. And so people who really, really try, you know, like maybe on the back, in the back of their mind, they know they need to kind of process some feelings, but they really don't want to. They keep putting it off. They keep pushing it away. They're like, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel that. And they keep just shoving and shoving and shoving those feelings down. There comes a point where they run out of fuel because they're suppressing their own fuel. And when this happens and they keep doing that, they keep pushing those feelings away, what can happen is that, uh, and this unfortunately is happening to a lot of people, and some of those people think that they found the holy grail of uh, spirituality or something, is that they switch to a very unhealthy coping mechanism where they suppress their own feelings, they suppress their own energy, and then they go looking for energy from other people. So they essentially become real energy vampires, what I call psychic narcissists because everything now becomes about fueling themselves without having to feel bad, without having to be uncomfortable. And that's a very, very unhealthy system. And unfortunately, plenty of people are getting away with it. Um, and plenty of people seem to thrive in the situation, but I can tell you, uh, once somebody starts doing that and they let it get worse and worse and worse and worse, or like better, <laughs> in their mind it's getting better, um, it, it does get to a point where it has real physical consequences and often these people start developing really strange diseases that are incurable and nobody understands why they got sick and all this kind of stuff because it's just there's a total disconnect between the mind and the body and the and the emotions or rather the body and the emotions are still connected but the body is trying to say like hey this is not working you know like you got to change this but the person is so in alignment with their mind with their ego they're like no I want the ideas that I have to reign supreme and I don't want anything to get in the way. And this very, very top-down approach. I don't want to listen to my body. I don't want to listen to my feelings. I just want to do what I think is right, right? And they keep forcing that way. Um, and they completely wreck their own system. And they also negatively affect everyone around them because they're constantly using other people as sources of fuel making those other people tired, you know? Um, so it, you know, it gets, it gets very messed up. So even if, you know, you might think, well, you know, theoretically I could see how I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure this whole emotion business is such, is such a great system. I can tell you if you do not align with your feelings, if you're really, really against it, there is, there's a different system out there and it's incredibly unhealthy and it's very, very, bad for the person doing it, it's bad for the people around them. So it's really just something that, you know, your your body, your mind, your soul, everything's designed to work together with your feelings. And this is one of the big lessons we have to learn is like how to understand and align with and, you know, use our feelings in a healthy way and not push them away, not suppress them, you know, not take them out on other people, but really understand like, what are your feelings trying to tell you about you, about your life, about what you can do, not about what they're supposed to do, what they're doing wrong, or what, none of that. Just what are they telling about you, your power, your responsibility, your options, you know, your path, really. Because when you really understand your feelings, you realize they're constantly pointing back to how can I do something with this, you know. Doesn't mean you have to fix everything. It doesn't mean you're responsible for everything. But it's just your emotions always telling you what is it that you can do in this situation, what is it that you need to let go of? What is it that you need to step away from? But it's always about you. There's always something that you can do, you can do differently. You can look at it differently. You can deal with it differently. Um, so your emotions are really, really important to keep the system together and to keep things aligned, to keep things real, to keep you moving forward, to give you energy, to give you momentum. And so it's, it's somewhat depressing that there are so many ideas out there that are anti-emotion, that are, you know, vilifying emotions, that are misunderstanding emotions, that are 
uh, teaching people like shortcuts and you know solutions to just completely bu bypass their emotions um, and a lot of that's coming from that one-sided understanding this idea that oh your emotions are just the result of your thoughts which again is like the mind and the ego are like taking the throne like oh we were in charge here we decide everything no they don't <laughs> you know this is your your emotions are the counterbalance to your your thoughts your mind your ideas and they're telling you that's a great idea but you know here's what else is going on here's what you need to know um so those are three i think huge reasons why it's so important to honor, understand, and work on connecting with your feelings. You know, it's an ongoing journey because we all have feelings that are easy. We're like, oh, I can do that one. That's that one's well, maybe not easy, but you know, you can do it. And then we have other feelings where we're like, oh, that one's hard. I don't know what to do with that one. Or I, I struggle with that one. Or I really have to make myself sit down and just really face that one because I don't like it. Right? So we all have areas where like we could use a little training and, and, and do a little work on those. Um, but it's so important because all those emotions are facets of you, parts of yourself, parts of your own voice that's wanting to be heard. And um, sometimes people think, you know, like, yeah, but if, you, if I listen to my feelings and I'm not going to get anything done because, you know, I have these ideas about what I need to do and my feelings just get in the way, right? They're just, they're bumming me out because I had this great idea, but my feelings are stopping me. But that only happens when your thoughts about what you need to do are very, very different from what is actually truly possible and truly right for you right now. Then there can be this huge gap. Or if you have a lot of negative thoughts that you just keep ruminating through and those are creating kind of a negative vibe that gets in the way. But that's, I'm skipping that because there's already so many resources out there on this, this idea of you know negative thoughts lead to negative feelings. I'm, I'm assuming you know that and I'm assuming you have resources for that if you need them. I'm here to tell you there's another side to this, which is, you know, when you get beyond the, the, the negative thinking, if you have that, you'll find that your emotions have a real voice of their own, independent of what you might be thinking. And you can actually learn to work with that. And you can actually be productive when you take that seriously. And when you realize like, wait a minute, my emotions are not trying to get in my way or sabotage my life but they just look at the world differently and they see different priorities and they see different things that need doing. And when you learn to align with that, you can actually be very, very productive. Um, if you're like, wait, how does that work? I have, uh, I, I taught a, a workshop uh, a while ago called Productivity Boost, where we really, I give you tools and a whole um, system, basically. You know, a system you can learn in a few hours, but it's a system to work with your feelings to get more done, to be more, productive by aligning with how you feel not by shutting it down not by you know not by pushing it away not pretending to be happy when you're not really being very real like this is how i'm feeling today i'm feeling depressed or today i'm feeling afraid or today i'm angry or today i'm sad and from there being productive instead of despite that or against it trying to drown it out no you align with those feelings and then you're productive starting from there and productivity boost shows you how um, so if you're interested in that, Productivity Boost is in the Happy Sensitive Library, my 24-7 instant access resource uh, system, resource, uh, well, library, <laughs> that's why it's called the library, uh, for highly sensitive people and empaths. And, um, you know, I really think that this change or this shift from, you know, mind-based living your life, being productive, doing everything, and seeing emotions as hindrances to shifting to a place where you start to see your emotions are on your side. They're trying to help you. They're trying to clarify. They're trying to intuitively warn you, enlighten you, help you out. They're trying to fuel you. And by aligning with that, you align not just in that moment, in that activity, but you realign with yourself in a really great way. And you appreciate um, not just your feelings, but all these things happening in your life, in the world, that to your mind seem crazy and out of control, right? Because that's what the mind does. The mind's like, I have got everything figured out. It just needs to be A, B, C, D, E, and everything else is just crazy and getting in my way. The mind's very arrogant like this. And it gets you stuck, you know, when you come from that place too much. The mind is useful, but 
don't want to lean on it too much because it can get very it gets very arrogant it becomes a huge ego um it starts fighting with people it just becomes a mess and the alternative method is and this is so true especially for highly sensitive people people who are more sensitive or more intuitive or who are feeling people by nature more than most you need to align with that you need to learn to work with that and not constantly try to judge it smash it you know restrict it just because we're living in this world where there's this old outdated idea that emotions are bad and rational thought is good this is a very very old historical you know kind of enlightenment perspective where you know the women are crazy and emotional witches and the scientific men are, are you know straight shooters and they're doing good work and you know these worlds they need to come together you know the world of feeling the world of intuition the world of kind of chaotic spontaneous things working out versus the world of planned organized structural logical decisions they need to come together you know so they can work together all right that's, I could talk about that for hours, but I'm going to leave it here. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.